Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Chiseler here, and I'm here to take you through my run through Chapter 3 of the Misty Island Legacy Expedition. It's admittedly very similar to Chapter 2, we're just going to be moving a little quicker with the strategies that we take. So, for those curious, the points that we're going to be taking into Chapter 2 are actually the exact same as what we used for Chapter 2. Sorry, taken to Chapter 3. So you don't have to worry about upgrading these any further. The chapter is very easily possible with just what we have here. So with the same point setup we had in chapter two, let's get right into chapter three. Oops, not challenge mode, here we go. So similar to last time, we wanna hockey our equipment right away. Uh, and I like to drop to the lower mid part of the map here in order to start harvesting these resources, which should give us enough to make some starting equipment and a workbench that we'll be able to take somewhere that has the gold that we're going to be looking for prior to day three. So the main objective we are going for for these first few days is to make it to the wave of day three with an overload sword and gold tools. Anything above and beyond that is considered a success. We'll probably try for some additional extra equipment, like say a uh, a cooking fire as well as a rainwater collector. But for now, uh, we are just going to beeline straight for iron. We only need five iron to achieve what we need to achieve, but I may grab a little more just if it's sticking around and easy to get. Okay, so we're at five. We're gonna head a couple maps away to a map that has lots of gold. Uh, actually, looks like we saw some back here. So I'm gonna make a workbench here. And immediately place it and craft a steel pickaxe. and get rid of the other one. And with this steel pickaxe, we need a total of 10 gold. The breakdown for that is five for the upgraded workbench, two for a golden ax, two for a golden pickaxe, and one for a overload sword. So wave one, or all of the waves in chapter three are slightly different from the previous chapter in that immediately all four defense paths are open. So we have to deal with four waves of enemies coming at us. Now, it sounds intimidating, but it's it's really not. The enemies are not much stronger than they were in Chapter 2. So we can pretty much go with a similar approach to before in that we just need to stock up on resources as soon as possible. So we still need a bit more gold, and I'm probably going to grab some iron since there's some big veins here as well. And even on top of that, I'm going to get some more wood, because we'll need the wood to make the additional structures as well as an additional work table. Now, after you get more expedition points and you upgrade the survivor exploration path a little further to start with these tables, you can kind of forego this step. Just a little bit of extra wood for some extra equipment will be really nice, but it's, um, it's not really necessary. So at this point, I'm just hoarding up on probably more wood than I actually need, but this will ensure that I've got everything that I need for crafting all of the later later items. So we'll just harvest these two iron veins, and then we're pretty much going to head back to base and collect ourselves, see what resources we have, uh, maybe start hunting for food, things like that. In fact, while these two are here, I think I'm just going to kill these two. Get some items that I can take back to camp with me. Because we do also want leather. Leather really early is going to be quite useful for making additional inventory space. And you start to go through inventory space very quick in these later chapters. Okay, so we've got all that. Let's head back. Just going to eat some extra food. Don't think I have enough quite yet for a or er, for a cook fire, so I'm just gonna eat all that right away. So we're gonna start with the basics. Get a new work table, put that down, immediately go for industrial. Put that down, go to our toolbox.
Make the axe, make the pickaxe, and then over in weapon, we will make the sword. So now we can start getting some additional structures. So I want a palm tent for sure, uh, as well as a cook fire. Oh, I will get, or sorry, a um, rainwater filter. I think those are probably the two most important ones, as the rainwater filter will greatly help with crafting and additional food later on. So for the palm tent, we're just going to head off to the side here, put the palm tent down, and return. That means that we will have the effects of the palm tent on us permanently. So I'm getting pretty hungry here. I need more wood. So I'm just going to go ahead and hotkey this and eat it. I can kill some additional mobs with the sword while we're out and about. Now we'll stock up on food. Also put the new tools in our inventory. I do a very good job of clearing very quickly. Okay, now we've got enough leather for an additional bag, as well as enough to make the campfire cookout. So I like to hotkey my food and water now, so it's a lot easier to mass craft them. So with this, I just press X and C because they're down here and they immediately pop into the cooker. We can hotkey our food as well. And eat. Uh, so that's pretty much all we need for day three. Uh, we'll craft a leather bag for additional inventory space. That'll help a lot. Throw out a few old items here. And while we've got some extra time, maybe we can quickly run to an outer map. Try to get a bit more gold or iron. Just anything to help us stock up on resources while we've got a bit of downtime. Because for the next wave, we are going to need a lot of iron, and we are also going to start grabbing the lava stones. So I want to go right for iron. New wave is here, let's head back. And we will be ready to defend. So like I said, as you can see, all four paths are already open, so we're going to have to deal with mobs coming from all four directions. Again, it sounds intimidating. It's not as difficult as it sounds. We pretty much have everything we need to easily hold off the mobs, uh, as well as set out on our expedition after this wave is over. So yeah, you do take a bit of damage, but don't worry, if you keep your hunger full, we'll be able to passively restore that. Now, it's probably something we're going to have to be attentive of as we're starting to get into the more dangerous maps, as the tigers, the eagles, the boars, everything will start to chunk us pretty good. So now we're going to head right for those outer maps to try to stock up on iron and lava stone. One take us there, it does. Some iron, I'm actually going to stop and grab that. Okay. 
Okay, ooh, there's two tigers, which is really nice, because we want those to try and make a specific type of boot. As with most mobs, you just gotta stay behind them and you won't take any damage. So we'll just kite these guys around. I'll take a single hit from them, and we need four claws and four leathers, which we did get. So now we can craft the really powerful boots when we get back to camp, and those boots just allow us to double jump all over the place. They're the fastest boot in the game, and they give an additional jump, making them very, very powerful. So that's already a great pickup. At this point now, we're just stocking up on resources. Keep my hunger full to keep my health regeneration up. Having some more health regeneration for when wave 6 comes around will be really nice. Now, again, wave 6, it sounds like it'll be scary without any defending structures, but with the weapon and armor that we're going for, we're really not going to need that much. So my goal here is to get about 60 to 70 iron, as well as 10 lava stones. And those lava stones, which unfortunately we only have 3 of so far... Uh, will allow us to craft the dual bow guns, the engineering work table, um, the the new drill, and the new saw as well. And those items are fantastic for mining resources later in the game. They are the best items for it. So we're just going to keep stocking up on lava stones and iron, and then we'll head back to camp and do some crafting, see what other things we can take care of at the same time. So up to five, I need five more. One more. There we go. Alright, we're going to head back so we can... Oh, actually, no, we're going to grab a bit more iron, and then we will head back. We can head out to the outer maps here. These maps are usually very rich in resources as well. Watch out for those monkeys. They are kind of tanky. Unfortunately, no iron here. Alright, let's head back and see how far we can get with the iron that we have. So first things first is I immediately want to go for the engineering work table. We need seven iron plates. Two iron rods. Two screws. And two levers. We go back here, craft that, and immediately upgrade. So now we can go to the weapon, which is the most important item. We need two iron plates. Two iron rods, two rope, and the lava stones that we got earlier. So these dual bow guns are going to be most of our damage. Next, we can upgrade our tools as well. We will get a chainsaw, as well as a hand drill. Just enough iron by the looks of it. Uh, well, actually not quite, because for the armor, we now want to try to get the heavy battle armor. And I need... Six gold, uh, gold pieces and another nine iron before I'm able to do that. So first we'll just take a moment to do some inventory management here. Re-hotkey some important items. Uh, probably make some more food while I'm here. And actually, while I'm remembering as well, also craft those shoes I was discussing earlier. At the very bottom, these feather boots, you need four of the Similodon items each. Craft that, toss out the old shoes. Uh, I can craft one more boiled pork. And now we are zooming. Alright, so a bit more iron, a bit more gold, and then we are good for the next wave. And see just how fast the hand drills punch through the rock. They're very, very strong, very, very fast. Absolutely recommend going for them as soon as possible. A 
bit more iron over here. Don't be afraid to stock up on lots of iron, because when it gets to the defenses that we are going to build later, we are going to need a lot of them. Sometimes these boots almost feel too fast. A bit laggy with picking up some items, unfortunately. And here's a bit of gold. Not much gold in this end map. Let's head back to the previous one and get what we need. Oh, actually, here's one here. Make a bit of damage. Do I have six? I do have six. And 12 iron. More than 12 iron. So that's perfect. And then manufacture more iron plates, two gold bars, and now we can craft the heavy battle armor. Now the reason why you want this is not only does it have really high defense, but it gives you attack power when you equip it as well. The attack power is also very, very useful. So we'll go ahead and equip that, toss out the old armor. I may have enough to make a hat as well. I always like the sun cap just because it gives a lot of defenses and it's really cheap. Go back to that, craft that. Okay. And we pretty much have everything we need right before the wave starts, which is great. So I'm actually going to go for an alchemy pot next. And the reason I want an alchemy pot is so we can craft whetstones. Whetstones are very, very useful in maintaining the durability of your items, as unfortunately, the dual bow gun has very poor durability. So we will craft alchemy table. The nice thing about whetstones is located under toolbox here. They are extremely cheap to make, as they only require stone. Gotta grab a pack of ten, stick them on my hockey. And with the dual bow guns equipped, all you have to do is press the key again to use the whetstone, and it'll heal up 50 of the durability. Grab some stuff while I'm waiting. Why not? Greedy. Also, especially because in the later waves, we are going to need a lot of wood. Probably about 80 or so. 60 to 80 wood. So, don't be afraid to stock up early if you've got a bit of time to do so. You can see just how damaging these dual bow guns are. They do a lot of damage. Very, very useful. Great one-on-one -on -one target damage. Gotta watch out for those thieves. They will teleport to the crystal and do a ton of damage, as you can see there. And now all we have to do is take out some mages. There you go. And that's the next wave. So now, what we are going to shoot for next is we are going to make walls, and we're going to go straight for the best walls, which is in these lava stone walls. So we need lava stones, gold, iron, and cement powder. So, with that in mind, we can head back out to the maps we are at and go try to find some more resources. Again, we'll need lots of iron. I think we need about 60 to make the four walls, so we'll want to stock up on that and maybe a bit of extra if we want to craft some extra stuff. So, at least 60 iron. Need lots of gold as well. And of course lava stones. So we need 12 lava stones, if I'm not mistaken. We need... 40, no, 36 gold. 12 lava stones, 60 iron. And the cement is essentially free, so I'm not worried about that.
And you can hunt these guys as well because sometimes they actually drop the refined resources that you need. Yeah, see? We've got the plates, rods. Get a bit of meat and leather as well. Couldn't hurt. Clean up the inventory a bit. And for harvesting lava stones, there's actually a new rock out on the beach now that just drops much more plentiful lava stones as well. You can see this one here has a much bigger crystal sticking out. As you can see, it drops lava stone and lava powder. It's very, very easy to stock up on lava stone resources with those rocks. Now, I haven't really explored these new maps or the underwater area much myself. Uh, those are probably going to come in challenge mode and with the challenges that need to be done. So I'm going to try to make a guide on that a little later on. But for now, I'm just going to stick to what we need to do for the sake of clearing Chapter 3. Okay, that looks like it'll be enough. Let's head back and craft the walls. So first things first, I'm actually... Okay, we do have a spot there. I'm going to craft another leather bag just to help with inventory space. I'm going to craft more boiled pork. Now, you can go for the countertop and craft better foods as well that restore more hunger. I find those can be a little hit and miss, given that they also run out of durability a lot faster, so I'm I'm fine to just continue sustaining myself on boiled pork. If you want to go for the, the more advanced dishes, you can, as they essentially take the same resources, just a little bit more water, but boiled pork is more than enough for what you need to do as well. Alright, so we need 12 of these. We have the lava stones, we need 19 more iron plates, which is the main reason why we were stocking up on so much iron before. And the cement powder only requires stone and water, so that's really easy to make. Let's have the axe. Okay, and now we should be able to make four of the lava stone walls. Perfect. It's going to be more than enough to get through. Okay, and with all four of the lava stone walls set up, now we can probably start focusing our attention on some of the resources that we'll need for later on. So, I'm actually going to turn these into Jewels of Water and Jewels of Lightning. I'm going to convert them all just to save some inventory space. In reality, you only need two of each. Uh, and this is because we are going to be making the Lightning Tower and the Frozen Tower, which, as you can see, use the processed glued laminated wood, which takes a surprising amount of wood to make. We also need gold for those as well. We already have the Lava Stones we need for those, so we don't need Lava Stones anymore. We're going to try going to a different portal, see if we can get more. And on the way, I'm going to be chopping down all the trees that I see as I believe we will need about 60 to 80 wood.
could be chopping down the bushes and the more spindly trees as well. They just don't drop as much concentrated wood. So for the sake of most bang for the buck for the effort I'm putting into it, I'm just going to stick to just going for the thicker trees. It'll give me the, mo uh, the most wood that I need. How many are we at? 64? Probably need a bit more. Okay, 99 wood, that should be enough, just in time for the next wave to start. Any last minute gold veins I can harvest? Doesn't look like it, so we'll head back, and we will get ready for the fight. So I'll put my dual bow guns in my hand, use a whetstone on my D key. Can't see me consuming it, but it did restore the durability on the dual bow guns. Yeah, durability 100 out of 100, so these are great. These walls are going to do more than enough to hold off whatever we need to deal with as part of this wave. Uh, it will be similar bosses to before in that we have the lesser Lizardman Chief, so the one that we normally saw in uh, in the ninth wave as well in uh, Chapter 2 will be showing up here again. As you can see, a lot of it is still just lesser mobs. This is probably going to be the similar case to the was at Chapter 2, where the mobs will be different for everyone. So not everyone will have the same waves as what you see here in the video. But just know that with the equipment that we have, you can pretty much take care of anything, no problem. Actually hop up here, I can hit him with this hitbox. There you go, and that's wave 9. We already only have one more wave to go, and we already have most of the resources we need for it. So I'm actually... Uh, I'm gonna hold on to some of these items. We're using an alchemy later. I need a handful of mints for that. Um, teensy bit short on gold, and then I think we have everything else that we need, so we're just gonna go find a bit more gold. Try going to a different part of the map. Okay, this works. If there's anything else we can grab before the end here. I think there should be enough. So we're going to need 16 of these boards. Uh, because those will then be used to make process boards. Okay, so it doesn't look like we needed quite 90. It looks like probably, I think it was 64 or so will give us the amount of wood that we need, which is still a decent amount, but just be mindful of, uh, of how much it actually takes. We're going to go ahead and make 12 gold bars. And there we go. I'm gonna craft two lightning towers and two frozen towers. You can really craft whichever ones you you want. A lot of them are really powerful in what they do, and that you probably are fine to use any of them. Lightning Tower is fun because they stun the enemies, and the Frozen Tower is good because they slow the enemies. Uh, Lightning Tower also has a much faster projectile, which is why I'm sticking it in the back. Um, so between the Frozen and the Lightning, they're going to be slowing the enemies, they're going to be slowing their attack speeds, uh, and they will be stunning them which altogether is a really powerful effect for taking on the final wave, even though it's not exactly necessary. But 
I'm just gonna go grab a bit more food, and then maybe we can talk about a couple other things we need to do. Or, I should say, could do. Not necessarily need to. We're pretty much set for the final wave at this point. Honestly, those three are all we gonna all we are going to need. So, with what I was talking about before, just to show you the structure or the um, the food items in question, I'm going to go ahead and craft a cooking table here. One charcoal. Or sorry, a countertop. And with the countertop. We can do a, cu a couple of items. The The main one I want to show you is that pretty much anything with two water will give you a dish that restores fullness by 60, acting power by 30, and it damages you a little bit, but that's fine because they're going to heal you up uh, anyways just from the passive effects. So if we do a water and throw a mint in there, that makes braised meat, which is very powerful. It's 150 fullness and restores life force. So this is great if you're taking a lot of damage. And that's why I wanted to hold on to a couple of the herbs so I can make a couple of these dishes. Oops. Uh, and then I'm going to eat that. Oh, whoops. Just eat it. And then these two flowers I'm actually going to use to make this. I'm going to craft a couple of gunpowders, and over here in your toolbox, you can make fireworks. If you use a firework, woo, celebration! Now we have a buff that gives us an extra 30 attack power, an extra 10% defense, and it lasts for 10 minutes, so it's going to last past wave 12. It'll give us a bit of a damage boost for the final wave. It's very useful, so why not? Toss it on our hotbar there. Now, a couple other things we can do here. Uh, if you're looking to get some extra achievements like crafting the Lizardman's Hat, what I would recommend doing is not install the Frozen and Lightning Towers on one side and just let these walls tank half of the waves. Uh, and then when the final boss comes, you can kill it, hopefully get enough Lizardman skin. Granted, this is mostly a Chapter 2 strategy. And with that, with the, uh, the feathers from the Large Eagle, which I do not have in my inventory, you can craft a Lizardman Hat. If you also have some downtime, I recommend crafting a lot of, where are they, a lot of these rainwater filters. And reason being for that is there is an achievement for um, collecting rainwater from these structures multiple times. So I'm just going to craft four more and stick them anywhere. So if you got some downtime, you can just come down here to these structures, collect the rainwater, and they will go to or be granted towards your achievement. Um, Structure-wise, you can also make an animal skin tent. This also gives you an achievement. So unfortunately, I think I used all my boards there. So I'm gonna go quickly find some more wood. So just building and placing the animal skin tent gives you an achievement, I believe. And then another one is placing it and recovering by a waterfall will also give you an achievement. I'm gonna eat fish real quick. Let's go see or craft the tent and then see if we can find the waterfall in question. Now, there will also be a prompt for when you reach the uh, the waterfall that you need to place the tent at. I personally haven't done this myself, so we'll see if we can find it. Uh, I think right here. Yeah, you see that prompt? When it rains, I'll feel better if I set up a tent here and sit down. So if we place a tent here... Um, I don't recall, admittedly, in the achievement if it has to be raining or not, but this is the waterfall with the little rocks poking out and with the prompt that appears. I'll actually just wait here a moment, see if uh, 
if that rain will kick in for us, set off a couple fireworks. Hooray! We're coming up on the final wave here. That should be good enough, and we will return. Put our double bow guns up, give it a whetstone just to be sure it's at max durability, and now we prepare for the final wave. Now, the final wave really isn't much different than any of the other waves or chapters we have faced. It's more enemies. Uh, the Goblin King will make an appearance here. Um, he's definitely tanky. He does a good chunk of damage, but with the same thing, as long as you stand behind him and you're smart with it, he's not even going to get through the walls. As you can see, the tower defenses are putting in work as well. They're great. You can pretty much just leave them. They took out those flyers all by themselves. Sounds like the Goblin King has made an appearance. Here he is over here. Jump up on this little ledge and just fire into him. As you can see, he's doing quite a bit of damage to those walls, and that's also damage that he would do to you, so be sure you're not tanking those hits. You can also see that the Frozen Towers and Lightning Towers are stunning him and slowing his attack speed. Not sure if that applies to the boss, but before I can even finish my explanation, he's already dead and we've cleared Chapter 3. So we'll go over here to the, our points. You can see I have a lot of points stocked up. We did it with the exact same point out as we did with or er, point layout as we did with chapter two, and chapter three isn't that much more difficult or different. The only difference is that we just have to be more smart in gathering our resources, prioritizing certain things, and it honestly makes chapter three a breeze. I think the strategies that we cover in chapter three here will be very useful for taking forward into challenge mode. I have yet to dive into that myself, so I'll keep you guys posted on how that goes as well as a guide for hunting the achievements for the additional uh, these additional flames, the Lava Stone Rebirth flames, that we will need to upgrade your Ancient Slate replica. Uh, I think that's all I have for now. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. Uh, and until next time, this has been Chisler. Goodbye and good night.